What's going on guys? It's Rekka back again from Anime Back When. Special video today. We weren't able to get his uh his face on here, but it doesn't matter. It's still an honor just the same. Now my um, videos, you'll have my video. So Oh, I'll have your video. Yeah. Oh, I just won't be able to see you. Yeah, you just don't see me right now. Okay, I just don't see you now. Yeah. Never mind. False alarm, false alarm. I would the roll video that over. is gonna be on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> the video will be on the screen. But um Look, I'm just going to do a quick background, and the background is going to actually segue into today's guest. Um, I might have to put the thumbnail as, like, the Kool-Aid man <laughs> smile or something like this, because I'm not going to be able to stop smiling the whole the whole video, because this one is just a big honor for me. Um, so you guys heard me tell the story a couple of times on the channel. I got into anime at five years old, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, uh all the early 2000s stuff i'm born in 96 so Yu-Gi-Oh, pokemon beyblade this that and the other nine years old inuyasha and when i got to high school anime was something that i did like every quarter like every three months i might binge to a show and i wasn't really into anime as much as i was into teenager stuff you know girls that started doing music whatever so i got to college um, the first year of college, I wasn't really too heavily into anime. I, I think I was like marathoning Dragon Ball, original Dragon Ball a little bit. And um, I got bit by a bug with a friend of mine at the time. And we started collecting DVDs for things that we had seen on TV back in the day. Things like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, uh, Martin, all kind of sitcoms, all kind of... I remember going to thrift stores and buying seasons of family guy and stuff like this and i promise you this is building up to something relative so just bear with me hey you can keep so, going as long as you want i'm actually interested in hearing it so uh you can okay. just pretend sounds like i'm not good. here <laughs> sounds good sounds good because this is not about me today that's why this is you know what i mean i'm gonna let i'm gonna let our guest get the glory and tell his story but i'm just gonna use this as a i want to hear more about your build. thrift store hauls you want actually hear? okay <laughs> sounds good so we started going crazy thrifting my friend had like a little stack of dvds like this big and it's funny because like i got the anime collection behind me mm -hmm. and i got a video game collection and you can see my little that behind me is my dvd collection mm -hmm. of like sitcoms and stuff and it's funny because before i started collecting i always had like this little urge in me to have i wanted to own the things that i was really passionate about before i was even a collector so I actually had like a little volume of Yu Yu Hakusho that I had bought at like a, what you guys would call Target in America. We call it, we had it called Zellers at the time. But before I was even a collector, I had that, which is just something I wanted to just put out there. But yeah, so thrifting and stuff like that, my friend had a little stack of DVDs like this big. And that kind of inspired me to want to have my little co collection because I had a couple of things. I had like one season of Fresh Prince and stuff like this. So. Me and him started going crazy, but I'm just, I'm a nut when I get it. When, once I get passionate about something, it's like I lose myself in it. So I started going crazy. Martin, Fresh Prince, Living Single. These are all black sitcoms for those that might not know. Um, what else is over there? The Wayne's Brothers and In Living Color. All kind of movies. Uh, Rachnophobia, I can see back there. Boy Meets World, all kind of stuff. Family Guy, Robot Chicken, South Park. I just started going crazy with it. Now, the objective was to watch things that we had nostalgia for. And around this time, me and that friend actually started beefing. And, you know, we're good now, but we just never rekindled that friendship again. So at this time, it kind of became just me. And I was always kind of more of a lone wolf anyway. So it was cool. So it was just me going to thrift stores every, you know, while I'm in college, my days off or maybe after a lot of times after college, I would like uh, drive home, stop at the thrift store, pick up something. So now we're talking about September, October of uh, or August to like November is the timeline of uh, this. So let's let's say we're in August now and I'm collecting. I'm doing my thing. And back to what I was saying, the objective of um, I tend to ramble a lot. So just try and follow. So the objective of uh collecting this stuff was to pretty much collect things that we had nostalgia for on tv and, and whatnot and um some of that nostalgia was anime so funny enough the first anime that i ever owned complete was like yu yu Hakusho, show 
the complete series, which because I had seen Yu Yu Hakusho when I was like 13. So I remembered it. So I had bought it on, off of Kijiji for like $40 for the complete DVD sets. You know the sets. Yeah. So I ended up getting that. I ended up buying the orange bricks, but it wasn't about collecting anime at this time. It was just about collecting little DVDs that we had, that, that I used to see on TV. So I had the first two orange bricks for Dragon Ball Z. And the show that sparked me off to want to collect anime was the first season of Case Closed, which I had nostalgia for. Yeah, also, but the first season of Case Closed. I had the save edition of that. Um, we sold it. And it's funny because those are actually rare now. Yeah, they are. For those that don't know. Case Closed has become a rare... Ever since Funimation dropped the license, it's become a rare, you know, thing now. But So that first season of Case Closed, and it, this takes me back to the little memories of, like, when you kind of were loose loosely watching anime and you kind of weren't overthinking it too much mm. because i used to go to college I, at, at this time my semester i had class let's say i want to say i had class at like 9 30 10 or maybe it was like 11 o'clock in the morning so what i would do i'd wake up 8 9 shower and then i would put in case clothes i watched two episodes it was either two or the standalone little murder mysteries or it'd be like a one two parter and then i would hit the bus to go to work and I remember something at some point it was something about the art style because at that point I wasn't too you know into older anime at that time it was just there happened to be older animes that I had loved from back then but I wasn't fully an older anime fan yet but something just something hit me when I was re-watching that that made me say man I want to get into more older anime so that sent me down a rabbit hole where I would go to the computer lab in between classes or after classes in college and i would you know watch videos there was a guy who he abandoned his channel now um it's been like five years since he's posted a video named anime every day he was kind of boring in retrospect but anime every day and it sounds had, really you know, familiar videos yep he did if you google it he did videos yeah. like uh 10 classic you yeah know, anime i remember you can't miss. yeah you remember, yeah, 10 top 10 sci-fi anime, 10 90s anime movies. So this is where I started getting familiar with stuff like... I had already heard about Cowboy Bebop, but I never had really studied into it. So he was talking about Cowboy Bebop. Uh, this is where I first heard about Ninja Scroll, Perfect Blue, things, new movies of this nature, getting into the Ghibli films. So I would, I would watch these videos, watch these videos. And through watching these videos, I ended up finding a guy by the name of Bob Samurai. And it, it just, it right away, something about the way he carried himself, the way he, you know, the way he, uh, his mannerisms, the way he approached his videos, it just resonated with me right away. Do you remember and what it was? Like, I don't remember the specific video, but it had to have been, I, I, I do remember what made me like become like a fan mm. was... It was. It ended up being all your videos, all the reviews, all the. But what made me a fan? It was something about those Otaku Tuesday discussion videos, like oh, letting man. friends borrow your stuff, uh, my anime adventure. Um, oh yeah. How, how to collect? I probably watched the How to Collect Beginner's Guide to Collecting Anime, I pro or Beginner's Guide to Anime. I probably watched all these videos like literally ten times, wow. over and over and over again. And this was just because a lot of the stuff. I was I was getting interested in a lot of the stuff that you were talking about and then you just so happened to also be like a good YouTuber that I was relatable with because a lot cuz I noticed that you talk a lot about being somebody that likes to do a little a lot more isolation. Yep. You know, a lot more enjoy your own company which is right up my alley because that's what I've been doing. I've been kind of like that since I was like I have friends and stuff like that, but as far as hanging out with people and wanting to be around a lot of people i just been like that i've been more a lone wolf since i was like 16 i like to spend a lot of time by myself so mm. it just resonated you know what i mean and then it's crazy because i was a fan for like five years and then when you did the video about um it was two videos it was the video you did how the recent one how racism starts in the home oh yeah when you were telling the story about your dad and, you know, now it wasn't relatable because my dad was a racist, it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> my 
my dad's not a racist, obviously. Yeah. Right? But when you were talking about your dad making life hard and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it was extremely, extremely relatable. You know what I mean? Mm. And then <clears throat> what solidified it, and then I'm going to finish my ramble and hand it over to you. What solidified it was when the coronavirus came out and you did the video about years of self-isolation mm. paying off or whatever. And you were talking about uh, the different stages that people go through when they are somebody that's isolated. It was like, bro, I feel like this guy lived my life like wow. in my body because the stages of like you start off, you're alone, this, 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 and then you become bitter and some people stay bitter and yep. then some people learn that they have to evolve out of that. I recently, over the last year, evolved out of that bitter, you know, stage of being mad at the world. And I was the guy that all my friends was used to seeing me complain about everything all the time. And Glad, so, you ha- glad to have you on the side of things. It's funny. It's crazy, man. It's, but it's funny because it's like five years after following you and this, that, and the other. Um, you put out those videos and that kind of solidified, yeah, there's a reason why I've been following this guy. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why... I'm a fan of this guy. You know what I mean? But um, I feel like there's other things I wanted to say that, of course, when the time comes for us to, to record, now I'm drawing blank. Well, you'll think but of I'm it as we uh, go on here. Exactly. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Just let the audience know. I want to well, First of all, I want to welcome to the show Bob Samurai. All you guys that don't know Bob Samurai, pause the video. Go look up Bob Samurai on YouTube. Go watch all his content. And then come back and watch these videos. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so but, I'll um, see everyone who watches this video in like two <laughs> years from now. Three years? Yeah. But, pretty uh, much. Pretty much. Ironically, um, those two videos that you mentioned, mm-hmm. like two days ago I enlisted them. They're still You can still find them. I have a playlist called Bob Samurai Discussions. I, discussions. It's crazy because I was looking for the video. Yeah. Like, the, the They're there. Video, and I was like, oh, he took it down. And it's not and down. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm not even going to lie to you. I had started the playlist this morning. Mm-hmm. The, the discussion playlist this morning because I wanted to freshen up for this video. So I was watching the playlist this m- early, like 1 o'clock. And um, I woke up. I had to go to... Because I work at 5 a.m. So I woke up at like 4.30 and then I heard the, like the I heard what you were talking about in the video that happened to be playing when I woke up and, mm-hmm. it, and it was the same video that I, I was looking for that I thought mm-hmm. was clean. Okay. So I ended up watching it. So I was like, did he put it back up or was I... Not, or could I fi- uh, not find it? Yeah. Yeah. I just feel so like, uh, I really enjoyed making that sort of video, but mm-hmm. I just feel like the direction I'm going with the channel right now, I just want to put an anime stuff, and YouTube yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, just that... favors people who do that one thing. Like, I really want to talk yeah. about PS1 games and stuff like that, too, but yeah. I should just stick it's, to what people want, really. The anime stuff. It doesn't stuff. favor the algorithm sometimes. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you saw, I tried to do the, I tried to do the, the and then we're going to get back on topic, just in case the people were eager to, to, to hear your story, but I don't know if you saw me do the Donkey Kong country gameplay. I saw that you I had it, really but I didn't, it. yeah, I didn't get a, a chance to check it out. I was. It's just, yeah, it's just something that people, people go, people go to see pe- the people that they want to see do gameplays. Yeah. And then they go to the people that they want to see do anime. So well, it also takes a lot of time to, I, f- I feel like there's a lot of people who, uh, they'll watch it for your content, but then there's a lot of people who also mm-hmm. watch it because they're interested in who you are. And who you are, yeah. And those people take time to build. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah the other so, kind, I feel like it's really easy to shake off. Like if you mm-hmm. say something that upsets them, they just kind of they'll they'll just out. unsub and they'll yeah, yeah. for sure because they were never really they kind of maybe liked something that you did, mm. but and they're like let me stick around and see what he has. But then the first thing you do that they don't like, they were never really a fan to begin with. But we don't, I don't want, know we about, don't care about well, those guys anyway. It's, yeah, it's really debatable because uh, I'm kind of on the opposite side of that, too, with a few of my YouTubers oh, yeah. who kind of change their content up, where mm-hmm. it's like a travel YouTuber starts talking about political stuff, and I'm kind of like... And you want to hold on because you were a fan yeah, of Yeah, man. Then, it was good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, um, Bob, just uh, pretty much... Let's get into your origin. You know, where are you from? Mm. Uh, How did you get into anime? I already kind of know the story from... But, yeah, get into where you're from. But let's see if we can get into a little bit of specifics. Like, mm. the area that you're from, you know, is anime very... Was anime an influence in that area? And kind of guide me through 
you know, how yeah, you are to where sure. you are right now. Well, I'm, I grew up in Virginia here, and okay. anime wasn't really much of a thing. I didn't have cable, so mm-hmm. when it was not, on not TV... Not to cut you off. Mm-hmm. Not to cut you off. What part of Virginia are you from? Uh, central-ish area. That's about as specific okay. as I'll get. But uh, Okay, okay. It's, it's not... I got, I, got cu- I got cousins that live in Virginia. Oh, uh, so okay. Well, well I'm, not in the, I'm not in the city, but I'm not out in the, the boonies either. Um, okay. I mean, I wouldn't mind telling you, but people are going to hear. So. No, 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 it's all good. So, it's uh, all good. and where are you from? You mentioned that... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm from... So, I'm from Toronto, man. Oh, I'm okay. From, I'm from the other side of the border. Cool, yeah, because you mentioned you didn't have yeah. Target. So, I was like, who doesn't yeah, have where, Target? Where did, but then, yeah, Canada doesn't have Target. They had, like, one, and then they shut it down, I think. We, we, we had it. We had it, like, nationwide for, like, three or a couple of years. They, they had bought out... Like our version of Target, which mm. was called Zellers, it had the same red and white theme, and they bought it out, and then it tanked, mm. and now it's just gone. Yeah. Yeah. So over here, I uh, I saw a, lot, a little bit of anime growing up. That was Voltron, and that kind of got me into the Power Ranger stuff because it was like okay. robots and Transformers. I was huge into Transformers. That was like my favorite thing. I still watch it from time to time, Transformers G1. So I was already interested in like some Japanese stuff. Plus I was taking martial arts and my teacher was uh, really into Japanese stuff as well. And he was doing all these paintings and talking about like samurai stuff. So for me, I was kind of isolated from a lot of the the popular things that people were into that got them into anime. Like, for example, Toonami. Dragon I never Ball. saw that. Like, I watched I watched Dragon Ball Z in I think 2009, 2010. So mm-hmm. it was really late start for me. So I didn't even know what anime was. I watched Pokemon and Digimon. I didn't still didn't know what anime was because it was just like on regular like TV channels that were free. And then eventually I. Uh, I was in high school, and I had a mm-hmm. friend who let me borrow some Roni Kenshin, like VHS stuff, Samurai X, Trust and Betrayal. That's a huge thing that got me into anime mm-hmm. right there because it was just like, I didn't even know what to expect. He was just like, here's this thing. You like samurai stuff. Here's this. Watch this. I didn't know what it was. <laughs> it could have been like fairies dancing, and I wouldn't have known any different. So I plug it in. That's the best, that's the best feeling ever. Yeah, I plug it in, and you see people getting cut in half, and like that part where the guy's sword, (laughs) Genshin's sword goes through the guy's head and like out his mouth, and I'm just like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually... I've never seen anything like that before. Never. The only things I had ever seen was like Transformers, Voltron, maybe a little bit of Ronin Warriors, Pokemon, and stuff like that. And I didn't even know what it was, but I said to my friend, I want more of this. And mm-hmm. he would let me borrow a few DVDs, just not really, because you know, anime back then we didn't have box. It was expensive. It, it was, was it was expensive, was but we had like the single DVDs, and I didn't know anything about it. Like the closest thing for me to getting into like foreign uh, anything foreign produced was going down mm-hmm. to like a Barnes and Noble, and that shit was expensive. I paid like uh, forty bucks for Seven Samurai, like on DVD, oh, forty five bucks. It was oh, super that's, expensive. That's, that's um. Akira Kurosawa? Akira Kurosawa, yeah. So that's actually okay, that's what got me into the Japanese stuff. Uh, old samurai movies, Akira Kurosawa, mm-hmm. Yo, you know, Yojimbo, Seven Samurai. Yojimbo. Yeah, sure. so stuff like that. Um, then also uh, PS2 games like Final Fantasy X was a huge eye-opener for me in terms of getting into Japanese storytelling. Onimusha. Mm-hmm. So I was really wanting to get into anime because I felt like it would give me an experience that was similar to the video games. To the video I, games, yeah. Yeah. For sure. So I was staying the night over, or I was I was visiting a friend's house, and there was this guy that had just come mm. from China, and he was he was going to give me a ride home, but he didn't have any money for anything because he's just like dirt poor. So I was like, hey, I got mm. some spare money. If you pull into the pizza place or wherever you want to go, really, he just want a pizza. I'll buy you a pizza or something. He's like, okay, thanks. So instead of taking me home, he took me back to his place, and he gave me this big bag full of bootlegged anime that were all scratched up the worst <laughs> quality. Not not the worst quality, but it was pretty bad. Uh, they were in mm-hmm. really bad shape. But that's how I really got my start into anime, aside from the VHS Ronin Kenshin. You know, I got uh, uh, Shadow Skill, Steam Detective, um... I had a little bit of Yamato, Yamato in there. Everyone always corrects me on that. Um, space, the space battleship. Yeah, Yamamoto. I had like one of the okay. movies in there. Um, Gundam Wing was in there too. 
Okay. But Shadow Skill was what really like opened my eyes to a lot of things because I haven't even seen uh, Ronin Kenshin at that point. I saw like DVD one and DVD two, and I hated it because okay. it wasn't anything like uh, Trust and Betrayal. So Shadow yeah, Skill it was a little bit more charming. It was. It a was. Bit more, yeah. Yeah. And I was just like. What am I supposed to do with this? Shadow Skill has them fights, man. Do Shadow they Skill do? Oh my god! And the worst man. part about Shadow Skill is that it looks like just ass for the first twelve episodes. Yes, it's, <laughs> and it's then, hard. It's, yeah, it's hard. It's the hard story is bad. You know, the char- everything about it looks bad. But then twelve episodes in, it's like they switch team mm-hmm. or like they turn the budget money on and they just started on, yeah. uh, everything but, just. Because I remember, I remember when I first um, got Shadow Skill, it was something I wanted to watch for a while, and. A lot of people were, were talking about it. You, you read reviews on Mal and it's like a mixed bag. Cause some people mm-hmm. is just like, eh, the animation sucks or the story sucks. But then some people are like, yo, I've never seen fights in Shonen like this before. Yes. So when I watched it and I got halfway through, I couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? That actually, great, it's, great it's like I'm always chasing that experience. Sin yeah. content, Shonen format. It's weird. Yeah. But it, it, it's... it's it's unique at the same time. Yeah. And it has a great opening, by the way. It does. <laughs> I, I listen to anime openings in my car sometimes. I don't really listen to much music. Me too. I can't remember the last song I ever listened to, but mm. anime openings is really it. Phenomenal. There was a time where I used to have like a playlist that was like Berserk. Tell me why. It was that. Yeah. And it was like Yu Yu Hakusho opening, Hunter Hunter 1999 mm. opening. Uh, there's a show called Fushigi Yugi. Mm. I used to watch the ending of that. But yeah, anime OSTs is like where it's at. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I have an anime uh, opening playlist if anybody's playlist? interested in that. I'd be down to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's on my YouTube channel. It should be there. It should be public. You know, A lot of that stuff goes uh, gets taken down. But uh, okay. the crazy thing is about like my big getting into anime is that I didn't really consider myself to be like that big into anime. Mm -hmm. until years after doing youtube so i started doing youtube off with professional like wrestling video game footage me and my friends would play smackdown versus what year what year is this sorry okay so i started doing youtube like 2007 2008 i was uploading like smack or maybe like late 2007 i was uploading smackdown versus raw videos with me and my friend playing because we go way back with that and then i was like you know what i'm gonna make other stuff I want to just talk about mm-hmm. video games or whatever. And then it was actually the viewers who got me turned on to more anime because I didn't know about forums. I didn't know about mm-hmm. any, like, because this was a long, you know, we didn't have, I think Crunchyroll existed back then, people say, but it wasn't what it was right now. Um, there was just no way for me to look through catalogs of anime. It was all just by word of mouth. So right. I had only seen like 20 anime, less than 20 anime, you know. I, I had a collection. That was the only way that I could watch anime because internet connection was terrible. Um, I didn't know how to download it, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't know anything about it. And it was my viewers that really mm-hmm. turned me on to it. So, to anime. Yeah, and I've seen over like maybe 860 so- series now. So how like but how does it get to the point where they're asking you is it like that you were trying your hand at it and you just seen that they were the ones that were like give us more of this co- type of content or was it something that well, you kind of just seen that people were asking for and then you said oh shoot I should try this it, well there's nothing to really try your hand at back then because there was no community oh because oh seven it was oh seven oh okay. yeah well oh eight I started making like more vlog style videos there. And I would talk about video games. Less, you're gonna. It's hard to find people who are interested in kung fu movies, and samurai mm-hmm. movies, you know, and video games. But the video games I'm playing are like PS2 games still, because you know I'm always a huge fan of PS2 games. So mm-hmm. it's just like I was talking about stuff, point, but they weren't things that really people cared about. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, so it's just like I talked about a lot of things, but anime was what really got people interested in it and then people are like man you gotta check this out you gotta check this out i remember um there was one of my early viewers we connected over shadow skill so i started talking to him on skype and we i got i learned about a lot of different anime from him and uh it's crazy that like a viewer is what started all a lot of people feel intimidated i haven't seen enough animated start doing youtube it's all about documenting your journey you can just do whatever and mm-hmm. it's it's interesting to see where you end up, you know, in ten years. It's amazing. You know what I mean? It's amazing. I'm on like like my eighth channel, but I still know all my channels. Mm-hmm. Why I so many videos out? 
no i just try different things man um, uh. i also do music too so mm-hmm. like i've done a lot of things i used to play mmos so i used to use fraps to record yeah. mmos and try to do commentary so i had a lot of I different know, channels too i don't know if you yeah, remember yeah. but I, I only i only did you have like a gaming channel or something i had like that? a vlog channel that became a gaming channel then i had a gaming channel that went dormant and then I had another gaming channel that was for live stream. And then I had a, okay. a Gundam model kit channel. Because <laughs> I do rem- a model kit channel. That's crazy. Because I knew I know I see I'd seen the Bob Samurai gaming one. Yeah. But then I think by the time I got to your channel, I think you kind of weren't really doing that one. Yeah. I really have. I uh, I'm just know, everywhere. You you had a channel called was it Anime Collectors Pro? Or Anim- like yeah, this? that was another one. I forgot all yeah. about that one. I, Anime I Collectors Corner one, or something. And you were doing pickups on there. You could yeah. see you see how far I used to dig. Yeah, I used to dig. I used to just find stuff. You know what I mean? I used to just be digging on YouTube. Yeah, just it, find whatever I could find. Yeah, it got really hard to make that content though because I just wasn't buying any more stuff. Oh, okay. Like uh, and that was another video that I I watched of the why I obsessed with buying anime. anime. Oh, obsessed with buying anime. That video too. That video too was cool. Man, I remember why recording that video. I I was on like four hours of sleep that night. I was just like, mm. I feel talkative. I want to set the camera up. <laughs> feel like shit, but I want to talk about anime. I was I was trying. I was I was internally disagreeing with everything that you were saying because when that video came out. Because I was in the the mid the middle of my anime buying, where I just wanted to buy up as much anime, and I just wanted to have a big collection. So I was like, yeah, but you know, if you're having fun, just keep doing it. Or if it means, I was just trying to find every reason to keep <laughs> to keep collecting at the yeah, time. Yeah, but there's a but lot of context looked, that's missing in that video. Exactly. Um, oh, one, yeah. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Two, mm-hmm. I was doing it to compensate for feeling just like being miserable. So it was right. kind of like a shopping addiction. So uh, it truly was an obsession. Like, I would wake mm-hmm. up, I'd feel like shit. You know, sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night, just think about life. Like, damn, why can't I sleep? Get up, let me go buy $300 worth of anime at like 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> like, for, for me, it was just, sometimes it was just, um, you just, I don't know what it is. You're watching, because you pointed this out in the video, too. You're watching videos and you're seeing people have this show and this show that you want, but you don't have. And then you're just like... Let me go see if I can get it. It's like you're always chasing yeah. a bigger collection and you're chasing to have the shows that you see other people have that you don't have. Yeah. You know the, what I mean? The thing for and me. Was that for me. Mm-hmm. Aside from just uh, thinking about how much it all costs, like if I mm-hmm. had thrift stores around here that actually had anime in it, then I would actually pick them up because I really do love thrifting. Uh, I can't wait till the mm-hmm. pandemic is over and we can go thrifting again. Me too. Me but too. Uh, basically... A lot of the stuff that I would buy, you know, I'd go buy it used on eBay or whatever because, you know, it's resellers and flippers, so the the price is marked up there. But uh, over the years, I look at some of the collection, and it's just sitting there, and it's got like an inch of dust on it, and, or some of it I'll pick it up, and it's just like disintegrating in my hands. Like I had this Elf and Lead uh, DVD set. I picked it up to open it one time, and it literally just disintegrated in my hand. I have a video of me on uh, Twitter just crumbling it up in my hands, and I was just thinking about it like, all I is just gonna sit there. Yeah, you're probably never gonna watch it again. Yeah, because that's, I look at the case and I'm filled with emotion because I can just look at all that and I remember all my good times. But at the same time, it's the data itself that I value instead of like the physical and the way the internet is right now. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like it's an unnecessary uh, See, expense. That's that's. And, I, and I've had this conversation with people over the years. That's where, like, there's going to be a divide when it comes to, like, the collecting, mm. you know, niche. Because for the people, and this is, like, a thing in the video game community, too. Like, the retro video game community. Because people feel like, you know, if you could just stream it or if you can get a ROM or if you could uh, get one of the, the little... Um, Mod your PS2. <laughs> the new... Con- that, too. Or the, I know you do, you've been doing that. Yeah. Where, or you can get one of the little retro consoles that have like 200 games on there. You know, there's mm. no need to have the physical. But um, it just depends. It'd be subjective at that point because some yeah. people like me, I'm really sentimental about just having things that I like. Mm. You know what I mean? Versus just streaming because that's what kind of kept me motivated 
so to speak, to keep watching anime. It was like yeah. I decided I was going to exclusively watch the things that I buy on DVD. Well, my you know thing is mean? that, like, I really do miss collecting, but when mm. I weigh things in life, like, uh, for example, I had an emergency recently and I had to go to the hospital for something, and the, oh, the yeah. cost of things here is just astronomical. So I kind of have a scarcity mindset where I just save money. Yeah, you need to, you need to save money for a yeah. rainy day. And I'll never, I'll never, I'll never deny that. I wasn't even so much when it comes to that like that's like a no brainer right when it yeah. comes to that kind of thing your your finances but I was just more so talking like the just the sentimental aspect of yeah because like, I really do miss doing time. that like one of my favorite mm-hmm. things is looking at the previews on there on the I never have ever done it you never do <laughs> believe I've never that's done the it. first it thing all, I do when I put it in yeah for me it was just always not just watching it it was not only obviously watching the show but for me it was just it's just looking at it on the shelf. Mm. as like where it fits on the shelf what shows it fits in between like there was a time where golden boy and great teacher onizuka were like right next to each other on my on my um Mm -hmm. and you know for those that know those two shows are kind of they're kind of similar spiritually you're right so that kind of thing is what is what i look at but sorry you were saying uh actually i remembered something i want to ask you do you have a crt tv I I have I've had two. Oh I've my had god! Two. So they're beautiful. When I was living with my, when I was living with my parents, and I'll show it to you. I'll get up and I'll show it uh, no, shortly. It's... But when I was living with my parents, I had like a thirty-two inch, um, JVC, that I had in like this big dresser thing. Like I I was like a little nerd, and I had like all my systems connected to it. Yeah. Dreamcast, all that type of stuff. Um, when I left my parents' house. I kind of just left it behind. I was just like, I'm not going to try to move out with this. And But was it so like a really then, quality CRT? Like, was it? It was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was the type of CRT that a kid in 1997 would, yeah, okay. would, it would be perfect for that, for getting yeah. on that. It was a very good, good one. I th- I guess they threw it out. And I recently, like a couple of weeks ago, just got a, a, a new one, a 13 inch. Didn't well, need it to be that big. What uh, kind? It's a citizen. It's a citizen. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna show it before this ends. I'm gonna show my CRT up. I know okay. what yours looks like. The big, yes, the big one that you. That one's awesome. It's amazing. It's a. Uh, it's nice. HD CRT. It doesn't have the scan lines oh, yeah. though. But watching anime so DVDs, year? it's like 2006 or something. Oh, so it's like right at the end. Yeah, right at the end. So it just so through. wow, that's awesome. It's got amazing features. It's got features. You ever watch a movie where the uh, there's an explosion? You got to turn the audio down. Somebody talks. You got to turn the audio back up. It will level back all up. that. It just like automatically oh, levels crazy. it. Um, it's got various things like the upscaler on this is better than upscalers on my 4K TV. Like in terms of lag, uh, there's really yeah. no latency here. So I've got my PS2 plugged directly into the component cables there, and it's also got HDMI oh, in. Crazy. Like if I want to play play some other stuff on there but anime dvds on a crt it just it's amazing because of the way the colors are mm-hmm. and you just miss out on that with watching it on the, like a lcd or something I'm, I'm gonna tell you something and i'm almost tearing up remembering <laughs> this the first time like my favorite anime of all time and you're gonna be kind of like wow but my favorite anime of all time for whatever reason i don't know why is uh pet shop of horrors oh yeah I don't know why i just i just watch it multiple times a year it just did something to me the first time i saw it right mm. um it's probably not my favorite anime all the time it's just probably my most rewatchable so I it's a good it anime favorite. yeah so the first time i got that dvd i put i put it into my crt and i experienced it that way so yeah anime dvds especially those 90s you know the, the older type of stuff it's 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 a unique experience yeah. But one thing I learned through uh, trying to get cons- old consoles to look the best is that the upscaling, it looks better for modern TVs, but like if you were to compare it like to the older TVs, in certain ways it kind of looks worse with the way that they de-interlace oh, yeah. it. So s- something is lost. Um, like if I use a de-interlacing, like I have the retro tank, which is amazing mm-hmm. if all you have is a CRT, but it makes the text mm-hmm. jumpy because of the interlacing that they use. But just the CRT just does everything perfectly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, yeah, I can't imagine playing, a time in my for, life. You mean just for playing, not for like trying to connect it to the computer or anything? 
Like yeah, it's hard to do that because back in the old days, uh, TVs, there was too much of a difference between TVs and monitors, especially CRTs. So mm -hmm. I, I'd have to get like a CRT monitor to actually do that, um, which I'd like to, but I just run out of space here, which is another issue with collecting. I'm just out of space. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to kind of downsize when I when I moved from my parents because, man. Downsize? You have a massive collection. What no, was it not the... my collection. Not my collection. Just oh. downsize the things I had. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I had a lot of junk. So. Yeah. But, yeah, I have a pretty big... Uh, my collection is probably like a, just a li maybe a little bigger than the one that you had. Um, it's like twice like, that, I think. Are you sure? Yeah, because it's not definitely. that big. It's just that it's on three shelves. Yeah, and like the last, you know what I mean. I really could have fit all of it on two shelves, on two bookcases. But oh, well, yours is all anime. Um, Mine's is like mixed in with movies and stuff. But uh, not true. I I true. separated some of mine. There's some that, like I've got piles yeah. over there that I'm like undecided on because I still look at it. and I can't bring myself to sell it because I sold I'm the really expensive you. stuff. But the stuff that doesn't, it's not worth a whole lot. I'm just like. I kind of want to keep this, even though I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I as, as of right now, I'm not open to selling anything. <laughs> but maybe I I'll. Well, I'll, I'll sell there. something like uh, I've. I never. I probably never want to watch Evangelion again. <laughs> I've seen it enough, Wait, well, and it's it's a really. I think it's a good anime, but I don't think I'll ever want to watch it again. And. Another issue that I have is, like, with Gundam, for example. I have a massive Gundam collection. I spent a lot of money on that. Mm -hmm. And then the Blu-rays came out. So I always, with with collecting DVDs, I always feel like they will become obsolete really quickly because a Blu-ray will come out. And then, mm -hmm. like, even the value that they have is just gone in terms of, like, resale value at that point. So I sold my Evangelion uh, silver set that I had. And whenever I the sell platinum anything edition. from my... Yeah, the Platinum Edition. Uh -huh. So whenever I oh, sell anything... Sold that? Yeah, I sold that. <laughs> oh, I got like my. maybe a hundred bucks. I just I'm never wow. gonna watch it again, and I feel like I've gotten everything out of Evangelion. And when I look at it, mm -hmm. it's a show that I like, but it's not a show that I love, and that's just that's true. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, like, I feel like, like the love. I feel like that's well, another. That's a whole another conversation, Evangelion. But yeah, like right. for example, <laughs> with uh, what was that anime? I watched your review of, or you talked about it in your uh, your. Your collection video is this anime. You didn't like it. I did. Only like 400 was it people. S other, was it S other? Oh, was Ease, it S otherwise? No, not Ease otherwise. Fuck that anime. Um, <laughs> uh, Eden's Bowie. Like, I oh, Eden's I should, Bowie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something the special review. about that for me. But other anime are good, but there's nothing like... I don't have that special feeling about it. Feeling, so, yeah. yeah. So whenever I sell something for my collection, I always tell myself to reinvest it into something that I want to have fun with. That way it's not mm -hmm. like, man, I, because I couldn't live with uh, selling it for a bill or something like that. If I had to, I would. But mm -hmm. just to think like, man, it, my Evangelion set became gas. Like I couldn't, it's too much. Yeah. That's why like, that's why I've, I've, I've had people sell me things and then, mm -hmm. yeah, man, you know, uh. You know, when I got bills to pay and stuff like that. Mm. I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, this probably meant something to you at some point. Mm -hmm. trade it, that, trade it's it sad. It's like that. Yeah. It's kind of like when really you... really just go work some overtime. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, yeah, people are in tough situations sometimes and don't know how to get true. out of it. But true. it's kind of like deleting some of my save files when you buy a used memory card or something. Like, ah, it's so hard exactly. to do. <laughs> But I sold that stuff, and I, I would buy things for my collection that I thought I would be, like, just totally ridiculous for buying. Like, I bought an M cable, which is, like, a $110 HDMI cable. Um, oh, yeah. Just other things, like, that I would never imagine, but I really, really want. So I feel like it's a good investment because I'm still using some of that stuff today where I've sold it for a similar price, and I've gotten something else that was also really nice. Mm. So I still where think I'm about that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. That, that was it. So you still think about okay. I was just still no, thinking just, about how like my Evangelion set is part of something that I own. Yeah, like if that works for you, then that's like then that's you know what I mean. As mm -hmm. long as you know that it went into something that was, you know, that it was worth it at the end of the day. Yeah. Even if you even if you wanted to sell it to use it to to use the money for 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 wood for fireplace wood. <laughs> yeah. Like, if that was worth it to you, <laughs> you know what I mean. As long as it it was it was fulfilling.
Yeah. You know? I also want to add like, anybody out there who yeah. collects like old older vintage like DVD and older video games and stuff, invest in really high end like crazy expensive stuff from like the the you know two thousands or nineties because that stuff's super cheap right now. Like I got mm-hmm. there's a uh, there's this box that they're selling. I forget what brand it is, but it's like a three hundred dollar box that splits component cables. It's like four in, two out. It's like three hundred bucks. I bought one that That's probably true. cost two thousand dollars back in the nineties or two thousand, or probably two thousands, and I got that for like sixty bucks. So it's just like all that old stuff is just dirt cheap wow. right now. It's crazy. Oh, I, I was gonna say this earlier about people that want to collect too. I'm at the, pl- the point now where I recommend everybody do not buy anything that you don't think that you're gonna like. Mm-hmm. Or that you already know. Yeah. You know like, I don't care how rare it is. I don't care. Buy things that mean something to you, man. Yeah. That's that's just where I'm at. Because there's a lot of shit that's on <laughs> that shelf over there that I know for a fact I'm never going to watch again. Yeah. Um, it, it is rare. But, yeah. I, I get a lot. But yeah. I did a lot of blind mm-hmm. buys like that because th- you can't help it. They're like, hey, we got this bundle, yeah. this Christmas bundle. You buy these anime and, and it comes with and this. like, yo... And you're like, yo, it could end up being my one of my favorites it of could all be, time. You never yeah. know, or a hidden gem. Yeah. Nah. I always remember the story. I came home from work. I had a, like a migraine headache, like really bad. And I always like to just listen to something to keep my mind from like thinking about how I feel. So I was laying down. Mm-hmm. I was listening to this. I put in this DVD and I was just listening to it while I was sleeping. And then I woke up. I was just like, wow, where am I? It's one of those like deep sleeps. And I just like look at the TV and two dudes were having sex. And I'm just like, oh my God, what did they what give me? What anime is that? <laughs> Chimera. Oh, shit. Isn't that it was like, like one of the worst animes of all time or something? No, like not, not nearly worse. Not worse than like Super Kid or something like that. But uh, oh. um, it's got this, this androgynous alien that can become either man or woman. And I just woke up mm. like, I own this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, them blind buys are just are crazy sometimes, and like sometimes the worst to me is like when it's something that's like very mediocre. Yeah. You know what I mean. That is the worst. Like in my rating well, system, a five is worse than a one. Yeah, like when something is when something is not bad enough for you to be like laughing at it or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be or just like i can't believe this th- they did this but then it's not it's not even good enough for it to hold your attention is like the worst it's the worst 26 episodes of your life mm-hmm. <laughs> but you own it so it's just like you're obligated to finish it kind of and that's how i use that's how i kind of but we totally varied off the story there but you said you got to youtube holy videos, shit yeah you're right <laughs> doing videos like to 07, 08. Mm. And then you said you saw a demand for anime. So then you kind of just kept doing anime. And then I... I well, I it had nothing it, to do with the demand. Many, I don't know how many subscribers you have now, but there was a point where I saw that you had like almost 70,000 or like 60-something thousand subscribers. Yeah, that was when I took a break. But there was no demand okay. for it when I started. It's just that I made friends and then they told me about the anime. The whole demand for the, the anime content started, you know, people were doing it when people started making money. But there was no money in it when I was doing it. Um, so Let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Were you were you ever cool with um For Neverworld? Yeah. Um I'm For Never for long Never time had ago. a video. Yeah, he had a video and then I'll let you chime in. Yeah. He had a video that I watched like years ago. I was like digging way back um and I was watching some of his early videos from like oh nine or twenty ten or something like that. When he was shouting out friends and he was like Da, such and such, double four anime, Bob. Mm. And then I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's Bob Samurai. So yeah. I always wanted to I couldn't ask you obviously, but I always wanted to know if that was you. So you so you you were you guys were cool. Yeah. Um I knew him when he had like thirty subscribers or something like that. And he that's became crazy. part of our like friends friend group of like the the guy who like Shadow Skill that I met from the comment section. And then he okay. He was already doing YouTube videos. I think I commented on some of his videos. I can't remember. But uh, he got so this really... this was very niche? 
niche. Yeah, it was, it was super niche. niche. There was like back then the 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 only the the things that would take off the most would be collab channels. Like you'd get people together, and it's like every day somebody would upload so a video. Seven, about, yeah, like mm-hmm. seven people working on so, one channel together. That's what really so, so, took off. So what about Neo, but, uh, so what about Neo Neo GameSpark and those guys? Well, I, I want to say that our friendship kind of got him inspired to making videos, but in turn, he kind of inspired okay. me to, to look at it in terms of like putting ads on the video and stuff. So it's kind of like we helped that's each other never, out. That's for, ne- that's for Neverworld. Yeah. Okay. But uh, Neo Game Spark, I, I didn't really talk to him that much, but I but know you, of but him. The fact, that you even know, the fact that you even know who that is, because that's crazy. Cause, so that means a lot of you guys. There wasn't too many people doing it, pretty much. It was, yeah. like, small enough that everybody could know who each other is. Yeah, Neo Game That's Spark. Uh, shit. There's a lot of people. He's still around, too. Insane he's, Game he does, Freak. He talks about video games, though. Yokorama. Um, I phone. remember Yoko Karama. Or, or, yeah. Yokorama is, is Fenever's friend, right? The, yeah, we're all like friends. Russian, uh, like a phone, guy. 999. Uh, we're all, like, in the friend group. We all kind of just got okay. together. Yeah. So was there any drama or anything like? Oh, this? there was a ton of because drama in it because I think I think everyone in the group would probably agree that we weren't really in the best place in our life when we were there. So okay, no hard feelings or anything. I'm mm. I would assume like I, I think they're all cool, but uh, okay, things just run their course. I guess we actually have a collab a channel that we did a long time ago called uh, We Are Nakama. I don't know if you ever seen it, but we have like it's fifteen possible. twenty vids. Yeah. It was possible, but yeah. So nobody would have taken it down. Maybe I'll go look it up later. Yeah, it should still be up. I don't know. But uh, that was really... Because it's kind of like... I had that that group of friends that I kind of helped build. But mm-hmm. uh, it kind of soured my networking, really. So like after that, I was just like... I'm, I'm not really into networking and stuff. So it's just like now... For ever since then, it's just like I don't really go and, and reach out to other YouTubers or anything like that. Like if somebody comments on my videos, then it's mm-hmm. just like I, I kind of do what I always did and just talk to the people who watch my videos. And I just meet people through the community. Like mm-hmm. the anime YouTubers that I watch are all people that I found through my channel in one way or another. Like I didn't actually go look for them. Like I don't watch any anime videos that I have to look for. Look and for you. yeah, I always like the fact that I can. The whole point is to just talk to people about anime. That's actually why I started doing YouTube stuff, is because it's like, supposed to be like a family kind of thing. Well, I guess, but it was kind of like I was just talking to myself in the beginning. But I just wanted to get out the things that I like because mm. I had nobody to talk about the stuff to. Because nobody around here was into like PS2 games at the time. Nobody was into kung fu movies or anime or samurai movies and stuff so it's just like youtube was that place and then much to my surprise people like continuously watched yeah Mm -hmm. man so i want to get into like i want to get into like as as the channel because you know i'm even in the middle of this right now there's a point where there's not a lot of people watching right Mm -hmm. but then there's a point where certain people will hit I don't know if it's a video. I don't know if it's a gradual build. Yeah. But there's a certain point where you start seeing you are waking up with more than one comment or more than mm-hmm. 100 people. watch. Like, you starting to put out videos and 10,000 people watch it in a fair amount of time or 20,000 views or 40,000. or So, like, what was the transition from, like, the beginning part? Of when it was just you and a hundred views or like a hundred subscribers to when you were at like 10, 20, 30,000 subscribers. Like, wh- how did it get there? Was there one video or was it like a slow build up? Um, well, it varies because I had numerous times like that. Um, I remember my first anime review. I used to really have like. I, I like to keep it real, as they say. I'd be eating uh, ice cream sandwiches <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning, talking to the camera half a, half awake. <laughs> so you my say videos... You, you say you used to eat, you say you used to eat a, a bag of popcorn and some beefaroni? Yeah, but not, I mean, point. not really on camera, but uh, that's, that's kind oh, of like... Oh, you mean on camera? You were doing that on I camera? I was on camera doing oh, that. Oh, shoot. Um, well, that's, I was, that's real. I was keeping it so real in my early reviews. I think my first review was Gantz. And I... uh, Great show. Yeah, one of my uh, friends who I met through the channel turned me on to that. 
So mm -hmm. as soon as the last episode ended, the credits are playing on the TV there, and I'm down there, and I'm doing the review. And the credits are still on. rolling. <laughs> I saw, I saw, I saw you say that in a video. Actually, yeah, you wanted to keep it so real that you like the yeah, like the credits are still just... rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so one big part of That's me uh, growing as a YouTuber was realizing how shit that was. <laughs> like the, everything I was doing mm. is just bad, and I was doing That's it funny. because I wanted to do it. But I was, I was never thinking about is this something somebody really wants to watch. So it took me a long it was time like to you're get doing a, it for yourself. Yeah, that's what I was doing it for. But uh, there was a few different videos that kind of got me up there. Like, um, I would say the biggest one would be my one million viewer video. That was uh, my, a crossover idea I had with um, with Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, One Piece, all the Shonen Jump stuff. So my idea for the video was Dragon Ball Z, lots of planets in the Dragon Ball Z universe. What if One Piece, Bleach, uh, all these other Shonen shows are just different planet. planets there, and they had a crossover. So I recorded that video. I was really excited to get the idea out. I look like shit. I didn't comb my hair. I was wearing, like, <laughs> I was wearing the clothes I slept in. I would just look like shit. And then nobody was watching that video. Then for never was like, hey, you ever heard of clickbait? <laughs> So I was like, what's that? He was like, here, take this, make this your thumbnail right here. Because that was, I had become partner at that point, I think. And yeah, he gave me this. back then you couldn't just, you couldn't just put your own thumbnail. Yeah. He photoshopped mm. a picture of like characters that I was talking about together. And I put that up there <laughs> and it just exploded. Mm -hmm. People hated wow. me so much for that because they thought it was actually a real crossover. And I didn't understand crossover. like, I didn't understand what clickbait was. So mm. that video got a million views on it. And I, I eventually deleted really? it because, yeah, that was like my, my biggest video of all time. And it was like 1.5 million views. And this was... So what year is this? What year is this? Like 2012, maybe. Okay. So a million views in 2012 is a lot. But, That's uh, a lot of views. It's a lot of views. I made thousands of dollars off that video uh, back then. And I eventually deleted it because it was like, that's the video that everyone knows me from. And I looked terrible. So I deleted that. Mm -hmm. And I had other videos where they were like discussion videos. So and that's kind of re what really discussion videos and list videos have always been what kind of like got me up there. But I don't was always that have. Burn, like, was that like a slow burn kind of thing? Where like every oh. time you put one out, you would get a, a a chunk of subscribers, and then it kind of built up. I was getting fifty views when I uploaded that video. Oh, wow. They got a one point five million views. So if it oh, comes, wow. if it comes, you won't you won't expect it. It'll just blow up out of nowhere. It's like you could go to sleep, or it's it's kind of like you you don't realize something, and. Mm -hmm. And like a week later, you realize there's like 100,000 views on it or something. That's just how it is. But the algorithm is totally different now. From what I remember, uh, there, YouTube used to be different back then. You could uh, back check certain things. Like you could see this video was shared on this website on this day under a video. So it looked like I do a, remember a, that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think a YouTube but admin you or something really... put my video on the homepage. And that happened to me twice, oh. actually. I remember that my friends uh, that I had made, the group of friends I had talked about, we did this dancing competition. It was like 2 o'clock in the morning. We're all on Skype, and we're like, hey, let's do a dancing competition. All right. So we all record ourselves dancing and just upload it for fun. And that video got put on the homepage of YouTube. And I refreshed the page once, and, once, and it went from two views to like 300 views. <laughs> and I deleted that so quick youtube put that on the home page yeah it was kind of so like why random you just leave it up because it was embarrassing you, know I mean? you could have been like you could have been like an early any one of these tiktoker or whatever like you could have i could have been but the idea of what that was didn't true. exist back then true, like true true the attention was uh <laughs> was worth less than the value of it because you would actually gain nothing from it other than ridicule it's true and yeah. back then, like, videos are such a precious thing. Like, you upload it, and it's just sitting there for a week, this naked video, and it's just sitting there all by its lonesome, and you get five views on it, and then, like, you get two likes, and then one person clicks a dislike, or back then, one person hits a one out of five star. That can just... It feels like it ruins the, uh, the the video that you made. It feels like nobody wants to watch it anymore. So you really feel protective. Back, back, then, it, back then it felt like that? Or... It, you know, anytime, probably, like, if somebody uploads a video right now and they get 20 views on it and two people go and dislike it, it's going to hurt. Yeah. I remember I remember a month or so ago, I put out the the video, like, about the occult. 
and how it relates yeah. to anime. And I saw that had some dislikes it. on it. I liked it. I was like, whatever. Yeah. I don't agree, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it could it could kind of frustrate you, but then it depends. Like, what if you kind of if you kind of um know why they're hating on it, then it yeah, that's the thing. Like, I was just about to say that. Like, if they leave a comment it, and leave some constructive criticism, then. It's yeah. like, yeah, I don't think I make the best videos. Maybe you're right in what you have to say about it. But, yeah. like, if you're going to dislike, how am I going to know? Like, you clearly have exactly. an issue. Let Insane. me know. So, yeah, so you said it was just something that kind of just came out of nowhere. Yeah, just random. Because, like, for me, for me, it's just like, how do you go from getting 50 views on a video to, like, all right, I know when I put out this video this week, I know, like, it's going to get like 10,000. Well, know, now that's like a I, lot. It's a lot different now. It's about search engine no, optimization time, right now. At that time, like, oh, at that yeah. time, how do you, like, how, like, what was like, and what was going through your mind? Like, when you went from 50 views to eventually like 5,000, like, what was going through your mind? Are you thinking, okay, now I got to, I got to change things up. Now I got to, you know what I mean? Like, how are you uh, adjusting to like. I didn't really care that much because, I mean, I was excited I that I was making money. But I hear this a lot from people. There's you like know, nothing changed. The the thing that actually changed was when I started making you know even more money. I guess that's that might be the the question that you're alluding to there. So uh, what changed for no, me? No, no, no. I don't. I wasn't even thinking money. But you can uh, talk about. I wasn't really think. I was so. I was really just thinking like the mindset of the mm, success. You yeah. know what I mean. But well, yeah, you could a lot of that, you know, I wanted to just keep it real and do my own thing. But for Neverworld, it was like, you got to be more professional in these things. You ramble on a lot of your videos and stuff like that, which I eventually realized he's right. Um, but I started doing more professional style videos, which I thought were professional. It's just me in my car, <laughs> just talking about stuff while I'm driving to work and holding the camera in my hand. Because I don't think they had camera mounts for cars back then. Um almost getting in accidents but it, like i tried to just be more consistent and professional and mm -hmm. uh a, a lot of the things that changed was like for hold i would on say one second. Mm -hmm. hold on one, one second if if you bob or anybody see me yawn i'm not bored i literally didn't sleep last night and then i went to work so oh, once yeah. i get off of this i'm going to sleep i'm not bored so don't say don't come comment oh man this guy looked like he was bored nah I'd I'm find bored. I'd consider that to be an achievement if I could be here on your own show and then you like fall asleep and I'm just sitting here like yeah <laughs> open mic yeah I'm talk for two hours, but uh, not sorry to cut you off. Man. No, no. Um, I feel like a lot of the money that flew in um, kind of made it worse in a way because it gave me certain expectations because there's a plateau that you have to get over in order from I can't do so this that much because I'm. Well, I'll tell that in a bit. Um, you, okay. There's a plateau. It's like I'm I can't do this that much because I'm working, but mm -hmm. it's like I'm working too much to be to able meet, to. You still like, need to meet something. There needs to be a jump off point, and I started like cutting back hours and things like that. But when I started like really seriously making some money there, um, it really changed the content in a way that, in hindsight, I didn't. I don't think it was for the best of the channel. Because uh, mm -hmm. there would be days I wake up like how like what am I gonna do today? What's my video for today? But comparing that to now, um, of course you just hindsight. Do what you want. I do what I want, but I'm mostly just doing it now to create the experience. And a lot of videos I made, like uh, I remember a few top five or top ten anime dubs or something like that. Like it was a bad video. Like I just made it because I wanted to have that that perpetuate that income and grow the channel as opposed to like other videos i made during that same period which were more thought out because a video like that is kind of in its own right clickbait, yeah in a sense yeah you know people are going to want to see what you or, okay, yeah of or, course um full metal alchemist brotherhood or whatever whatever show yeah yeah i was yeah. just like you know just think of 10 random things and make a video about it um mm -hmm. the direction that i should have went um i because i felt like you know the the saying "no man is an island." I I really should have went in the direction of uh, being more community oriented. Uh, the yeah. reply videos back in the day, if you if you remember on YouTube, there used to be a reply section, yeah, or video responses. Or, yeah. That was the best thing right there. Like yeah. you know, you would make a video discussing something, somebody else would make it, send it to you, and then you would make a response back to them. That was awesome. But now mm -hmm. it's like you make a discussion video. 
Okay, maybe this kind of comes into my cynicism with anime, but I'll watch a discussion yeah. video and I'm just like, I don't agree with this, and I I don't want to talk about that because I'm gonna make somebody angry, and that's not how I make friends. <laughs> so I'm just not gonna say anything about that. <laughs> So you feel that way sometimes, like was... too, when you watch, uh, like, well, I don't know, like, some, the, the anime videos that reach me that I don't really find are usually sent to me by people who are like, hmm, Bob will find this interesting, let me piss Bob off or something. But I don't actually go out and, like, search for stuff. But in hindsight, building a community with YouTubers would have been the best thing. Well, this is the thing, bro. See, like, I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. And I, I already knew you you were going to be... The, I already expected you to be cool and be the exact same. Like, that I've been seeing you on the screen all the time. Mm. But, like, you can't expect that out of everybody. That so is true. I, you know, I had another, a lot of bad experiences. Down, that's, a, that's another issue that's going to come when it comes to networking, which is why... I, yeah. And the bottom line is, like, majority of the people... Somebody told me this that was older than me years ago, and I didn't think... I did. I was like, ah, you just said, you just are old, angry. It was somebody that was 10 years, 10, 15 years older than me. They said, when I was like 15, they said, most of the people that you're going to encounter in life are just not going to be good people, right? You're going to, you're going to, it's like 90% of people are not going to be good, 10% are. And you got to kind of, you, you got to kind of keep people at a distance until you can filter out who's good and who's bad. So yeah. maybe subconsciously you were meeting people and you kind of weren't getting the right vibe. and that's Well, I was meeting some people people. that... Because, uh, you know, when YouTube started becoming more, like, money-oriented, it was, mm-hmm. like, there was really competitive out, it, and, you know, a lot of bravado and stuff like that. It brought out the worst like in people. Yeah, it, it did. It really did. So I don't think it was, like, you, I, I doubt that it was, like, you being selfish. Or I don't know what your mind was, but... It might not have just been like you being selfish or like you or I, you know, I should have networked more. Well, it's like I would do a, I would, I'm, I'm not saying any names here, but I would do videos mm-hmm. with other people and it's just like it would, it would take two hours to record a, or three hours to record a 15 minute video and it's just like I would say something and they're like, no, nah, no, nah, you can't say that, you can't say that. And I'm just like, so it's not even organic. It's not. At it's it's point. really like a lot of people, they kind of see things differently. And what worked out best was when people, it's kind of like how we met. We just kind of like, we just mm-hmm. found just out we had similar just interests. Organically. Yeah, just organically. That's, that's how things should work. I don't really get into the going to Reddit and share stuff or, you know, sharing stuff on Facebook or anything like that. I just kind of like I'm let it grow organically. But organic is very slow. <laughs> I'm, gu- I'm guilty of Reddit, not going to lie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, do all, they still like all. flame you for posting something there? Because they used to do hate they me. They do they like flame you for posting anything they there, don't. advertising? They don't. They don't. Um, because I posted in rele- relevant um subreddits. So because of that, uh, like I'm, for example, I don't know if you saw. I had a video come out today. Um, called the Gundam Bible, which is I, basically the ba- the breakdown of how to get into Gundam. Mm-hmm. And I was posting it in, like, every Gundam ready. Uh. And the, the, f- the feedback was pretty positive because mm. it's, some people were just like, oh, shoot. Like, I didn't know uh, that there was a double Zeta Gundam. Like, wow. A lot of people didn't know hey, that. But they're on a, a Gundam of- subreddit. So I Actually, guess what you, you know did. What? The guy that said that, the guy that said that, you know what subreddit it was? It was, it was, uh. Gundam Breaker, it was Breaker, or it wasn't. It wasn't like that. That one wasn't actually uh, for the suit. It was like the build kit, the model kits, or something like that. That mm, particular. Oh, guy. I see. Yeah, that's interesting. That guy. Like I always feel like uh, whenever I post things in certain places, it might be my experiences from posting on Reddit because I did try and post on Reddit a few times. And people just hated me, but I just posted on like our anime, and uh, I, I think what you I did right was you found you got to go deeper, find the niche, and then put it there. Because, like, a lot of the things I'll say in a video, a, a lot of people would disagree with. Because it's like my yeah, opinions on anime on that, are not really mainstream. On that ready, on that page right there, you, yeah, they're going to hate you. Because they're more talking about all the mo- the modern stuff, right? And Well, I was talking about the modern like stuff, our, too, but... But you have a different view. So yeah. they're more coming at it. Like, when you... So for the fact that you're going to... And you're just like me. You're going to criticize fights... That mm-hmm. fights are not the only thing 
that will make an anime good. I don't care how good the battles and the blasts and stuff look. If the story is crap or if the characters are are one dimensional, you know what I mean. Yeah, so you I feel say stuff like that. Yeah, but people don't. But a lot of people don't care about that on that subreddit right there. Yeah, so. a lot. Of, this is the thing that I realized when I was doing anime reviews full time is that. Uh, anime is made for people who go to work and they come home and relax and watch an anime or they go to school and come back and watch an anime. Uh, they're not really made for people who their job is to watch anime. Um, so the way that I would see it is like, how can I they're expect not anyone? Well, maybe. Um, Maybe some people are, but the thing is, is like they didn't they didn't sit there and watch it because it was like their job to watch it or something like that. And sometimes that's how I felt when I did that. And mm-hmm. looking back on it, I d- actually did make a lot of videos that I was a little bit too harsh on things. And right now I'm actually a little bit more relaxed. That's, my guilty pleasure theater and what, whatnot. That's what I kind of meant, like when I said analytical, because they're probably not piecing out every little. You know what I mean. Well, some of them are like, because like, they uh, they see other people do yeah, it and well, they kind of like it makes them feel cool yeah. or something like that. Yeah, well, yeah, you do have some no lifers on there, but <laughs> I feel you. So, um, at some point you ended up taking a hiatus, mm-hmm. which was heartbreaking for for me. Yeah, <laughs> it was just as bad for nah, me but, too. Nah, but um. It was, but the, but before the hiatus, it was like a slowdown, and then it was like a hiatus. Yeah, I I just so got like, to the point. It was to, like, mm-hmm. uh, you so like you start with the slowdown. Like, like start okay, with the, the slowdown. Start with the I think it happened around the time. So I watched Legend of Galactic Heroes. I think this is the timeline. I watched Legend of Galactic Heroes. Fucking blew me away, and then. Mm-hmm. I expected all the other anime to kind of be like that. Everybody kind of falls into that, you know, the pitfall of being like really critical about anime after they see some really good stuff. But I remember I watched mm-hmm. Monster and I was really critical of that. And I shouldn't have been that critical. I recently rewatched that and changed my score to a 10 on that because I think it it deserves it with the experience that I had with watching it the second time around. I was like, yeah, this is really an amazing show. But uh, yeah. Oh, you, so, you critiqued it hard? I, I was hard on it, yeah, but oh, wow. I was I was hard because I felt like I uh, I was felt like people wanted to see the critique, but mm-hmm. my goal isn't really to to critique it. It's just to I want people to watch this stuff. That's why I do the spoiler free. Mm-hmm. So I want people to watch it. So uh, mm-hmm. you know, if it's good, I'm gonna compliment it for that. If it's bad, then you know, I criticize it. But I, I don't want to get on camera just to criticize something for the sake of just criticizing it, which I feel like I did with Monster, but. Uh, I kind of just got in this slope where I wasn't really enjoying anime anymore. And eventually it just got to the point where it's like I was in a, I, I really have to be into it and enjoying whatever I'm doing in order to really be in, like to, to perform at all in anything I do. Or it's just my performance is going to drop to nothing and I'll just be a total failure and if my emotions aren't there. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what like, happened with I it. Too. And it just it's got like to the point where if you're not motivated, you just got to leave it alone altogether. Yeah, the views are dropping because YouTube changed something. Um, my videos are changing because I wasn't really, I had kind of screwed around too much with my hobby, and I was trying to, I was expecting to make an income out of it because I had quit my yeah. job at that point, and mm-hmm. I was, I had really good money coming in. I was making a couple thousand dollars a month doing just so anime was that, stuff. Was, was that hard? Like, was that hard on you? on your ego a little bit it wasn't hard on my ego the hard part was that when uh the sponsorships eventually changed over to like things just changed and there was less money in it but i still wanted to do what i was doing and i couldn't afford to eat so i basically almost died (laughs) so i realized like hey i gotta put youtube on hold here and i gotta find something else to do i can't do this right now (laughs) because i know for a lot of people it's just like a dream of like you know how many videos you see on YouTube. I finally quit my job and I'm doing YouTube full yeah. time. I don't. I wouldn't really doing, consider that a dream, but no, nah. I, I I would rather do. Well, that in than hindsight, else. in hindsight now, it's it's easy to say that, right? But at the time, you were probably just like before you were doing it when you were still working. Whatever. Yeah, job, you're probably yeah. Just when like, I was working, I all I could think anime. about doing was just getting home and making videos. And making but then videos. as soon as so if, as soon as work got taken, you know, I quit my job. It was mm-hmm. just like, let me go watch anime. What seasonals are coming out this month? Maybe I could shit on this and it'll be a funny video. What's a list mm-hmm. I can make? It, 
I think that's my fault. It's not the fault of... Uh, it, that's all my fault. It's just my perspective on it that uh, I just wasn't no, ready but, for that but, change. But it's expected, like, when you... If you're if you, if something becomes, like, your main bread and butter, basically, so yeah. to speak, right? That's true. It's all, like, you have, to, you have to put that... You can't... Like, for me, if I was to be... If I was to quit the job I'm working now and I'm making two, three, four, five hundred or five thousand dollars a month just to do videos, I'm not going to be able to just lay in bed, you know what I mean? Lay in bed, watch an anime and mm. then put out whatever little review I want Now I'm going to start thinking, oh shoot, like I got to come correct so more people watch. I got to think about the algorithm. Yeah, well so, the problem is that you can just lay around if you want. Uh, my issue is that I really get distracted very easily with things, very like mm-hmm. ADHD. So I would, uh, I just like, it's hard to stay focused on stuff and mm-hmm. without a boss to keep you in line and to just pester the shit out of you to get some work done, uh, it just you goes a long anything. time. Yeah, because I'm, I'm sure you remember you watching Otaku Tuesdays. There was a point where I only did Otaku Tuesdays because I was just like, yeah, it was like you were just putting out like a weekly review. Or yeah, or not review. And I was weekly, miserable like doing that too. Discussion. I was yeah. just like, oh, find these links, and it was just that one video I was doing. So it's just like the stimulation mm. of something had dropped off, and the stimulation had lessened. And I was just like mentally, when you're in it by yourself, it's really hard to just push yourself. And that's kind of like what I was saying earlier about. Um, looking back on the videos that I made and seeing the support that I had back then, it kind of just, I had a blind eye to it a little bit because I was just getting so much of it that I was just thinking about more and more and more. Now that I have less, Mm -hmm. I look at it like I really had something going for me there. But uh, Mm -hmm. now I do a lot of stuff now. I'm like really busy now. And on top of that, it's like I'm so busy with stuff now. It's hard. I wish I had the energy and the time to do all this stuff. But I know that if I invest like full time efforts back in anime stuff, it's not going to really get me anywhere so, because I, I just need to progress further in life. I think. So are you still uh, are you still like doing the self employed thing? Yeah, I have an eBay store okay, cool. where I would I would go to thrift stores and stuff, sell that stuff, which I haven't been able to do that in a while. But I still have hundreds of items that are left online, and people just buy that. Uh, I trade stocks. I uh, I have YouTube. I have various different. Uh, ways that i make money through youtube like uh mm-hmm. affiliate ships and things like that you know people buy t-shirts and stuff it all just comes together to be comfortable ish you know mm-hmm. but uh how e- how easy is it to get into that to that stuff like how easy is it to like make now of course you're not going to be buying a night like a like a brand new car or anything off of this but like how easy is it to not have to go clock into a job and just make money self-sufficient i think comfortably i think my first full like year i made like i sold like 20k of merchandise so yeah you know that's so it's doable so it's doable it's doable but you got to be business smart like i wasted money on certain things you got to really be efficient like i was spending too much money and stuff like i went to the thrift store i went to every thrift store and not the cheap thrift stores because all Mm -hmm. the thrift stores are kind of going to be the same like depending on where you're at pretty much pretty much yeah so just go to the gonna have some of the same brands and all that type of stuff too Mm -hmm. yeah so it's like i just go into i I quit going to i used to drive like 100 miles a week to all these different thrift stores and i'll like i telling you never really found any anime there that i wanted to get but i would just buy mostly Mm -hmm. clothes and I'd spend like seven dollars on a jacket, five dollars on a shirt or something. Then I started going to this one like mom and pop thrift store that was like a charity thing. Everything there, like if you go there at the right time, is a dollar. So you buy oh, a wow. jacket for a dollar and flip it for like even if it's twenty bucks. Normally I wouldn't even mess around with something that I could sell for twenty bucks. But if you only buy it for a dollar, then for a dollar, that's a big profit. That's a big profit. That's but big profit. like I said with YouTube, the same thing started to happen. I just started getting tired of it. Like I was pulling seventy hour weeks, and I'm just like. I really want to hire somebody to replace me because I don't like doing this and the the eBay site sucks. So Mm -hmm. I feel like because I'm just this one person that's working at this, it's really difficult. So I always thought about getting together a a group of people that would kind of like just be like, hey, what's your project this week? You know, what are your goals this week and whatever. But it's difficult when I'm sitting here watching stocks, you know, because stocks Mm -hmm. is the most. You ever traded stocks? I'm literally just getting it, my foot in, into it, like okay. literally right now. 
it is the <laughs> most stressful thing that I have ever yeah. done in my life. Like, oh, just man. sitting here, it just feels like somebody reaches in and pulls my soul out through my asshole. Like, somebody with really <laughs> thick arms. Because <laughs> it's just like, because it's just like, Wah! like, you put down $2,000 on something, $5,000 on something, and then it's just like, Bionk! and then you're like, ah! and then it goes up, and then it's like, ah! <laughs> so it really plays with your emotion. But mm -hmm. I, I probably just kind of suck at it, so... That's that's the thing. I'll spend like over the weekend. I should have been working on anime videos, but I back tested my stock trading strategy through like two decades worth of stock data. You know, just testing things out, and it's just like mm -hmm. I, I feel like I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. So, <sighs> yeah, okay. I'd rather make anime videos. <laughs> hmm. So you're back. So is it like that you're back to anime videos now? Or is it like, it, like in the sense of well, are you coming I back watch to anime. YouTube? Mm -hmm. That's another question I wanted to I ask just, you too. I do like, as much you, as I did can. Did you stop? Did you ever stop watching anime, or was it that you stopped kind of messing around with YouTube? You know what I mean? Did you ever like fall I never out of quit. love with anime? I, n I never fell out of love with anime, but there are times that I okay. just felt like I couldn't watch it. Uh, you just see mm -hmm. so many shows, and it was something that I, I got a video. I'm working on this right now, actually, about you get out of, out of anime what you bring into it. Just like with everything in life, if you go to work with a bad attitude, you're you're gonna have a shit performance. But uh, if you watch anime, like some people, they watch anime, like this needs to fix my depression, but that's not gonna work. It might work if mm -hmm. you're lucky, but it's probably not gonna work. So the mindset that I had about looking at anime was just this very toxic mindset regarding it. So there were times I just couldn't watch it. Uh, but now, mm -hmm. my mindset now is like, I just want to make just these videos. <laughs> well, I just watch it. Like, this is what I feel like watching right now. This is what I'm going to make a video just, about. Just and turn it on. Just yeah, just turn, turn it on. on. I, feel like, I, I feel like I have to think of it as a service that I'm doing mm -hmm. that people expect and that uh, I think of doing it less as an entertainment thing because when you start thinking about being entertaining, that's when I feel like it starts to get really stressful. So I'm just doing it. People can like it if they want to like it or not. I've, I'm, I've done it for long enough that I can make an informative video that's short and succinct, but I don't need to add in all this flair, all these memes and stuff like that. I just want people to know, is this anime right for them? And, like, and that's I just, all they're clicking the video for anyway. Yeah, like I don't, it, think, it, I don't think a lot of people understand that. Like yeah. people just want to know all the little funny stuff that you throw in there, and the little, yeah. you know what I mean, the little jokes that you throw in there, and all this type of stuff. People are really there to they want to know a little bit about the show, and do you recommend it? Yeah. So, so really, I like that you said that. Yeah, really, my idea is like. I would just like to have this massive catalog to create new anime fans or to get people to watch different shows and stuff like that. Like if something were to happen, like if something were to happen to me, I would still have the YouTube channel and then people for maybe five years, however long YouTube lasts, people Round could just line. Google it and then they find it. Yep. And it's just that's like, okay. Because I, I feel like that's I, one of the most important things there. They work so hard on making like, this stuff. And mm -hmm. like for, about Like for me... It's crazy. Like, I feel the exact same way because for me, I want to, I always was thinking, I was probably thinking about that today. Like, I, I would love to have, because my biggest, like, drive to do these videos is a lot of, um, like, the, the older OVAs and stuff like that. I don't know mm -hmm. what it is. Like, the little one hour or the little six episode, three episode OVAs. Yeah. Um, stuff like Pet Shop of Horrors or stuff like, um, whatever, Battle Angel, uh, stuff like Bastard. Go oh hell there. yeah like, bastard yeah you know what i mean like all the ovas from the 90s and stuff those are like the my favorite videos to do they're the, my favorite anime to watch and my favorite to to review right and i'd love to just have a catalog of like there's a guy that i used to that i started watching by the way named uh anime abandoned bennett the sage oh yeah um, i know about him you, yeah you know about him right yeah so he's he kind of that's kind of his niche also is like the over he, he he's done a lot of the ovas and stuff like five six years ago yeah but for me like i'd love to have like a whole like you said catalog of like just pretty much all different types of anime that you could think of like mm. and you see that i've done a five ten minute video on it so yeah anything that i feel you like that's much better watch i actually mm -hmm. i was inspired by some of his videos a long time ago and i'll just make these long oh, yeah videos and i feel like the best thing because i used to feel like really crushed by the pressure of like all these other really large channels 
uh, mm -hmm. because I would watch their video of a certain anime that I'm reviewing, and I was just like, hmm, how could I make a better review? But I feel like mm -hmm. the best thing to do is just don't try and compete with people. Just do your own thing. Yeah. But uh, people are coming for you at the end of it. People will, people will gravitate yeah. to you for you. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. But uh, what would you feel is some of the largest bottlenecks in the process of you creating videos? Bottleneck? What, what, what's that? Like something that you you really don't like doing or something that takes a lot longer oh. than it should. Man, I do not like capturing footage. <sighs> I, I, I do not like capturing footage. It man. sucks. What do you do it for sucks. that? Like, how do you do it? So, I'm, I'm on the Mac, right? So, uh -huh. I'm on Mac. So, and it's a laptop, so it's pretty, it, I'll say it's pretty convenient. Like, I'll literally lay in the bed and I'll have YouTube videos playing or I'll be watching something. And then, whenever I finish the anime, whenever I decide to record the footage, I'll open up QuickTime Player on my Mac and then... Wherever I can find the anime on the easiest place to find it that doesn't have too much pop-ups and stuff, whether it's mm. GoGo Anime. Sometimes you can't you can only find it on GoGo Anime. At one point before they closed Kiss Anime, I used to use that too. Sometimes I'll be lucky enough to find a good quality um footage. Sometimes certain anime is like uploaded on um on YouTube. Mm. Like a lot of the OVAs are on YouTube. So I can just open YouTube and I can just skip, 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 skip. And I kind of just record it with QuickTime Player. QuickTime on the Mac, it does full 1080p. And I don't really have to upscale or do much to it. That's really so. stressful. But you're also losing a ton of quality in the process. Because somebody, somebody, yeah, somebody had it. Like, if you think about how this worked, somebody bought mm -hmm. the DVD at one point in time, ripped it, mm -hmm. used whatever deinterlacer they had, could have been a terrible deinterlacer, and then uploaded it to the internet. Then, who knows how that many people uploaded it and, and reloaded it since then. Like, the version that you're recording it from could have been uploaded and downloaded, like, five, six different times. But then you're recording that, which mm. may or may not be full screen, so the pixels would be stretched so, at a certain point. So, what do you recommend? So, how do you go about How do you recommend to get, like, the best? I, I did always wonder about how, yeah, how to I got get the best. Yeah, like, if we have similar tastes in anime, there's a website that mm. I can share with you privately that you can... Okay. You, you'll find a lot there that you like. And and this is like original, mm -hmm. like quality, like it's yeah, like a. It's, it's good. Like, like you look at my videos, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's good quality. Cause like, cause when I look at like you know Mother's Basement. Nah, I don't think I've seen one of his videos. Oh, you've never heard of Mother's Basement. I've heard well, he of him, but of, he does it, a lot of he does a lot of newer anime. Yeah. Or like, have you heard of Bonsai Pop? Sounds familiar. Bonsai Pop, they do a lot of the, the older anime. Like, I'm looking at their videos, and I'm like, how do they get the resolution so sharp? This is going to sound weird, this? but you're probably one of the the more frequent anime YouTubers I watch. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I really I actually, seriously don't watch anime videos unless it's, like, somebody that I've <laughs> met. I like to have the conversation, oh, yeah. like to watch the video, leave the comment, or maybe have a conversation off to the side or something like that. That's, I can't do that with up. certain people. Like... Mm-hmm. You know, I'd go to somebody else's channel, be a com I'd be a comment, and then just, like, forgotten. Because I don't know if you're they check it or not. You're, you're not lying, because I subscribe to all these people, but it's rare that I'll watch, like, their full video unless it's something that I really want to watch. But mm -hmm. when it's somebody that I know, or somebody that I've just been a fan of for a long time, but mm -hmm. especially if I know them, then I'm, I'm for sure going to watch the whole video, and I'm going to be more engaged. So I, I get what you're saying. I guess people watch YouTube for different reasons, too. Mm hmm like, if, if we're talking about those channels, like, we're kind of competing with them because we all make anime videos. But at the same time, if, yeah. if we were to just one day wake up and have all of their subs, they would just yeah. leave again anyway. So it's just, like, there's no point in... in uh, the, mm. the point of what I was saying is, like, there's no point in wanting to have someone else's, like, envy in so, someone else's viewership. Like, if they wanted to watch your videos, they would. It's very easy to find the stuff. So you, you kind of have your own group of people. <laughs> and when I go to other people's yeah. channels, I just don't feel like I fit in with that group. For me personally, I try not to get it. I try to look at everything like individually. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't feel like I'm competing. I don't, but I do, like take different things from different plate, like from different channels that I like, mm -hmm. and I and I see, okay, that's a good idea. Let me do my own flip, on this because that's a good idea. Or, I like this editing style. You know what I mean. The only reason yeah. why, the only reason why most of my videos, I learned to do like you know how do you have the black the sidebars on the black uh, 
wow, the black sidebar is on the side. Yeah. When you, when, especially with a lot of older anime, the only reason I knew to like duplicate it and blur out the side so it doesn't just look black and you could have the fade, mm-hmm. you know, on the sides is from watching other people's videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's like the most that I, that I, that's the most outside of watching a video I do with other people's videos, but like competing. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, like everybody has their own, their own take on, on other people's channels, you know? Yeah. It's interesting to talk to people and see it like that different people have different views on things. Or like sometimes, like I'm talking to you and we have different views on certain things, but then there's a lot of things that you're saying that it's like you read in my mind. (laughs) Yeah. So it's it's dope to have these discussions. So how long does it take you to make a video? Like, uh, man, like your Yojimbo video. How long did that take? I'm going to be honest with you and I'll, and I'll address the Yojimbo video, but to answer the first part of the question, um, it, I can literally, like, what time is it right now? Right now it is, it's probably after like six or seven, right? Mm. So right now I can go to sleep watching something. Maybe I'll wake up in the middle of the night at like three, four, five o'clock, right? I'll put on an OVA. The OVA mm-hmm. takes like an hour to watch. Somewhere towards the end of the OVA, I'll start writing the video. And then Mm -hmm. when I'm done writing the video, because I'm telling you, I I try not to be too heady about things, right? So as I'm writing the video, follow the timeline now. It's probably 7 o'clock in the morning now that the OVA is done. So I finished writing the video. Let's say I finished writing the video by 7.30 because I'm just really going off of... So you you write a script in 30 minutes? Yeah. But also remember, I'm not doing a 20 minute script. Like, I'm yeah, doing a, a lot of my short. videos are three, four, five minutes. So I'm really just going off of what I felt about mm-hmm. watching it. You know, the this is how I felt about the animation. Um, you know, this is what the story is. This is, you know, what the characters are. You might not like this. You're probably gonna love that. And I just kind of go off the head with it for like five minutes, and then. I'll like record the and then so and a lot of times it's like I intend to put stuff off till later, but then I'm like, what's stopping you from really just doing it now? So fine, I'll just record the footage. 20, 30 minutes recording the footage. Uh what's to stop you right now from just recording the actual audio of the script? And um I have a different I have a I'm I make music, so I kinda mm-hmm. I, I'm able to take the skills that I do from making music to being very i'm very quick at uh recording the the stuff so i can record this stuff and then i can chop it up very quickly chop out my mistakes so it, it literally takes me like 15 minutes to record and have the, the audio done for the script because if i make a mistake i just chop it out you know what i mean yeah so that's really I, enviable I chop- actually because uh, it's enviable because it'll take me days <laughs> for a script really well, I don't work at oh, it all wow. day. Like, I'll just sit here, like, I'll watch it, and I don't like to make the script right away after. I like to just think about it for a bit. So the next day yeah. I do it. So it's like I'm sitting here, I'm trading stocks, but I'm also writing the script. It's kind of hard to focus, and then I'll just get sidetracked with a lot of stuff, and I'm, like, writing the script, yeah. and I'm like, hmm, I think this way should sound better, and I'm thinking about it like... You see, you see but, yeah, so we're coming at it from two different angles. Because mm. for me, I'm I'm doing that, but I'm doing that... Like, I'm finishing, like, so while I'm thinking, ah, oh, that probably doesn't sound right, I'm, in my mind, I'm finishing this thing right here, right now. Mm. So I'm kind of not coming back. You know what I mean? I write yeah. scripts, and then I come, and then I don't record them for, like, four or five days sometimes. It's not uh. like every video. Yeah, there's sometimes where I'll write five minutes of a script, and then I'll come back and reread it, and then I'll be like, you should add this here, you should take this out, mm. and then I'll come back to it maybe two more days later. So it's not like every video was done in five minutes or recorded. Mm. Yeah. So okay. some some of the some sometimes I sit on them, but for a lot of these videos, like the Yojimbo video, I didn't intend to do a video for the Yojimbo video. I'll get on that now. <laughs> um, I watched Yojimbo. I liked Yojimbo, but I just I wasn't hit by it enough that I wanted to do a whole captured footage. Yeah. I wanted to stress over which of the twenty six episodes do I want to capture footage from. <laughs> You know what I mean? I just mm-hmm. I wasn't 
so, but I was like, I still want to talk about this because I still would like people to see it. It's, it's yeah. kind of one of those early 2000s animes that nobody really talks about. I, I, like I have a video on it. it. Yeah, I I saw that you had one actually. Yeah. That was one of one of your more later reviews, right? Yeah. Because I, I really I enjoyed that it. anime. I was surprised you didn't uh, yeah. like it that much. No, I did. I did. I did enjoy uh, it. It's just maybe I enjoyed remember, it a little bit too much. Do you remember that? Do you remember the casino episode? No. Where they were on the where they were on that train? Oh yeah, I do remember that. Like that, I really liked that episode. There was episodes I really liked, but I just felt like it was kind of boring at time. Yeah, that I kind of like anime like that, where it's just like yeah. slow moving. Sometimes I do, especially when it's dubbed. Mm-hmm. That it's got to be dubbed because you just relax. Well, it, it gives you the opportunity to like do other stuff while you're yeah. while you're watching it, which is what I like. Yeah. But um. But yeah, to answer how long it took me to do that, it was something that I was just meditating on while I was at work, and I came home from work, and I just recorded it, recorded my thoughts on it, seven minutes. Um, and then it probably took me an extra like 30, 45 minutes to chop it up and, and um, you know, uh, yeah. cut out what I needed to cut out. But yeah, I try not to be too heady about it, man. I try not to. Cause I already know because with making music, I tend to be very heady about that. Mm-hmm. So the animated stuff is kind of like a. It's for me to really gen. It's for me to finally have something that I could genuinely just do without stressing myself out mm. it's really just from the heart so you're not like you know I mean? goal oriented with it I am goal oriented like uh-huh. once I started gaining a little bit of like once I started having recurring people commenting and things like mm-hmm. this that's when I was like okay I have some people now that and when people started coming on my videos and saying can you do a review for this and that that's yeah. when it kind of became like I would like to see the channel grow like I'd like to I make think you'll actually grow a lot uh <laughs> When I link you that site that I use, because I think so yeah. because I watched the video. I'm, I'm thinking like it's kind of a little bit fuzzy, a little bit, but yeah. overall the content is good. It feels like mm-hmm. I watched the video. I'm like, whenever I make my video, I think about what video do I want to see because I don't really watch anybody else. I'm just thinking, what video mm-hmm. do I want to see? And I watch your video, and I'm like, this is the type of video I'd like to see. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I find that to be enjoyable. But with my videos, like my initial D video I did, I record, I wrote the script. Great video, by the way. Oh, thank you. Great that video. was, I'm glad to hear that because I'll tell you, like I wrote the script and then I went back and changed parts of it around. I recorded it. I was editing it up and then I was like, I don't like this part. Went back, rewrote it, parts of it Seriously? and did that two more times. Yeah. So basically I went back and rewrote like two paragraphs at different times and then re-recorded it. And I, each time I'm the worst with uh, remastering mm-hmm. vocals. So yeah. I'll go in there. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Press this button here, this button here, this button here. And it all kind of sounds like shit sometimes. Like my initial D video sounds really bad in terms of like my vocal I'll, stuff. I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you want, you could send me your audio files and yeah. I can mix them for you. That would be nice, but I really want to find somebody who uses the program that I have, and then they do it and then show me the mm. settings so that I could just do that. What do you, what do you use? What do I you use, use Audition. Do you use Audition? Adobe Audition. Yeah. I might I can I know how to use audition but I might give you something that's or or give you something that you could you if you don't mind learning something slightly new. Well, I pay for the monthly. Use. I pay 60 no. bucks a month for this stuff. So Oh shoot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got to learn this stuff. I get my money's worth out of it, but uh <laughs> there, there's I could probably find you cuz I know cuz a lot of the a lot of the plugins so to speak mm-hmm. or a lot of the settings are like the same on other program so i might yeah. we'll talk like and i might okay. be able to send you a video or something that might that that could help you yeah well the settings are probably better. similar you're right like uh mm. you know i know the settings are very EQ, similar to this stuff EQ, yeah eq, EQ yeah and uh-huh. all that stuff like but uh, a lot of it a lot of it if you're saying it sounds it's not sounding good a lot of it is just gonna what do you think like, about it you you're more you're more knowledgeable about mm-hmm. this stuff than me you think yeah. it sounds all right my newer videos i th- I'm gonna your newer videos now. Okay, I can't compare. Like this is my raw I, I, audio. What you're listening to the same mic that I record with. Do my video sound no, like? I think your videos are fine. Okay. Overall, I I'm just overthinking. Fine. I think they're fine, but it, I'll listen to them. But if if you're saying if there's anything specific that you don't like about them, I just want them to um, sound better. <laughs> you want it to sound cleaner. I guess I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with it. I just know that I'm never happy with anything, so I'm just like always messing around with it. But what I do with 
we'll talk. I'll help you out. All right, that sounds good. But with my initial, like with anime videos, I'll take the clips so you'll process it because the file that they come in, it won't mm. work with uh, Premiere. So I'll have to process it to a different file, and then I'll sit there. I'll rewatch the entire series again in like Why? really fast speed, and then I'll cut out every single clip that I think is interesting, and then so it's kind of like I edit the video before I actually edit the video. So like, you watch shows twice. Sometimes I watch it three times. Why? <laughs> Sometimes I feel like the first watch through is just for fun. The second watch through is just for the review. You know, I haven't done that wow. in a while. But when I say watch through it, I'm watching through it at like 10 times the speed. through Because, you know, I've oh, created the proxy oh, oh. files and I just go through in the editor and like rewatch it again. And I cut out every bit that is interesting. So I've basically edited the review before I've ever recorded the script. And then wow. whenever I'm finished editing the video down i save all of that stuff as different files it's like a b-roll whenever i start doing like discussion videos and list videos again i'll already have the footage there so wow. it'll be easier in that the long run di that's different yeah that's different but it takes a long ass time like my demon slayer video that took me like two full days of work oh i did a demon slayer video last year that was a good anime yeah it was pretty video. fun looking for the next season of that's, that that's a better a better one of the better modern um yeah anime you know? a little bit too much comedy but i think the action is amazing like yeah i'm not art. a comedy i'm not a comedy head in anime either i like comedy to a certain extent i i hate when every like other scene is like yeah know, ah! Ah! I, I like it but i don't like it in every show yeah. like have like, you've ever seen example, hmm? mm -hmm. um kenichi the mightiest disciple like I was just talking to friends about that the other day, and I was telling them mm. how they might not really like it if they rewatch it. And they said they they they're like, nah, I rewatched it recently and I loved it and da 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 da. And I was saying that I the reason why I didn't like the rewatch because we all first seen it when we were like thirteen. Mm. I just felt like there was way too much comedy than I remember it. You know what I yeah. mean? I thought I remembered it to be this serious action martial arts so show, and like Nijima or whatever his name is. Too much. But yeah. It's yeah, interesting so. how perspective can really change a lot of that stuff. I'm actually working on another video right now. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my script for my kaiju review, and I thought about a concept that I felt really obscure to people because I'm kind of like eccentric with the way that I see anime. So I started another tab writing a script for another video, and then I thought about mm -hmm. something, hmm, I need to open up another one and start writing another script. So I'm writing three separate scripts at once. But uh, Three? Yeah, like three separate scripts for three different videos at once because I just had this idea bouncing around. I didn't want to forget it. But uh, mm -hmm. one of the topics was about like really I, being able to identify the type of anime that you're watching. Like Some are more focused on the story and some are more focused on the emotion. And it's interesting to hear you thought Keiichi was a serious story because I thought it was more like of an emotional story just for fun. I actually, I think it's a pretty fun show still, even though it's been a you long time Kenichi, since I watched it. You thought Kenichi was, was, was emotional? Emotional in terms of, oh yeah, because like, he was I like getting tits. his ass whooped. You know, I like tits and I like to laugh. So, that those oh. are emotions. So I don't mean like I wasn't crying to it. No. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, perspective. Perspective is totally different. Like for me, I just saw it as like, I came into this show to watch. This guy was getting beat up, and then now he's gonna mm. learn to defend himself. I don't yeah. want to see. The the goofball of the school in every episode doing dumb shit like you know what i mean yeah that's the way just I how i felt about it yeah well, the way i see it is the story pivots around his his strength and his training but it's not necessarily mm -hmm. about his character development is like his personality or whatnot so mm -hmm. i would consider like the action that is that's like an biggest. exciting yeah that's an exciting emotion there so that's yeah. like the primary thing but having a good story really helps that out. Like with the world God only knows, that is definitely mm -hmm. a lot of fan service I still there. I need to watch that. I need to watch that. It's a good show. But they have a lot of good like mini stories in there that I think are good that really is like you come in not expecting the stories to be good and they're good and it just hits even harder. Mm hmm Man. Um so what are you watching? I I'm probably gonna wrap this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'd like to pick this up another time. Yeah, because I think we cool. got a, I think we got a good report going here. Yeah. So I'd like to pick this up another time. But what are you what, like? What are you watching right now? 
Well, as, as, as soon as I get out of this, my girlfriend and I are going to watch Legend of Galactic Heroes movie. I'm finally getting her into watching that. So Dope. happy so for that. On your, mm-hmm. on your girlfriend for a second, like she's into anime too? Yeah, she loves it. She okay, cool. grew up in Taiwan and, you know, they love anime over there. So We're Awesome. Yeah. But uh, aside from that, I'm not watching anything right now. I just finished Kaiji and I'm not going to watch anything new until I just finish with that review and then I can like mm-hmm. just dump it start out of my fresh. brain and then start fresh. Start but fresh. I found this awesome. one anime that I just found. This sounds interesting. It's like a, it's set in Chinese history and I think Lu Bu is a character. If you've ever played uh, Dynasty Warriors... You ever play Dynasty Warriors? The, is, it, is it the main guy in Dynasty Warriors? No, Lu Bu is the secret that? dude that looks like a cockroach. He's got those things coming oh, out of his hat. Nah, so, nah, I don't know. Um, you know. Do you know the name? So, no? so Ten Koru. Let me find a uh, trailer, uh, like a picture or something. Because I, I knew about this. I watch a lot of anime by feel. And I saw mm-hmm. one picture of it and I thought, I'm watching this. Okay. Okay, let me find just like one image and then I can send it to you and be like, hmm, what do I think about this? Sounds good. Uh, okay, this is just some random image, but just like you can tell the art style and everything. Uh, it's kind of like four images together there. Mm-hmm. But I, I just like the historical thing, the art style. It just looks nice to me. I don't this even know anything kind of about familiar. it. Familiar. This looks like Does it? Familiar. It it looks like more modern, right? I have no idea. I imagine probably like 2008, this 2010 cool. or something like that. Just by looking cool. at it. Kind of has like a Edo or feudal. Yeah, but it's like China though, which is really cool. Cuz there's already a lot of samurai stuff in anime, so. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that. What about you? What are you watching? What's what's your next Man. anime? So I'm so I have like three reviews um coming out soon. I don't even, even really want to spoil them, but mm. all I'll say is you know Cat Planet Cubes. Mecha- it's, it's <laughs> nah, it's Mecha March. That's all I'll say. Oh hell yeah, that's cool. And it, and aside from from that, like I have plans to watch other stuff. But like as far as things that I plan to watch, like I plan on watching um. Like I'm finishing up my Satoshi Kon, uh, the the four Godfather movies of Satoshi Kon, the main yeah. Tokyo Godfather, Perfect Blue, you know Millennium mm. Actress Paprika. I'm planning to just rewatch those and throw out some reviews for those. Ah, uh, those are great movies. Consecutively, awesome movies, right? Yeah. And then I got and then I got some OVA stuff coming in. That I can't wait to watch. And that's just... I can't wait to just watch those, really, more than review them. You know one great thing about the OVAs? You mentioned earlier, I kind of forgot about this. Most Mm -hmm. series, like as manga series, they start off with a concept that's only intended... Like, if you were to properly adapt it into anime, like, for Mm -hmm. example, with Dragon Ball in the first arc, with the Pilaf Saga, or with Roni Kenshin... the the only arc. (laughs) That's what I hear. That was supposed to be, like... That's his initial idea. But if it's popular, then they continue it. If it's not, then, then they, they just continue. drop it to that. Yep. But OVAs are kind of like the essence of that original idea for a new series. So, yeah. like, say, for example, if One Piece never became popular, it would probably be a six-episode OVA. OVA, Or a 12-episode yeah. OVA but, or something but did, like but that. But did you know that there was a One Piece OVA before it came out in, like, 98? All uh, right. That rings a bell. Um, I think... A, there was, like... A, there was like a 30 minute OVA for One Piece. So it rings yeah, a bell, but I don't right. know if I've ever seen it. it sounds interesting mm-hmm. though. And but it was done by Production IG, not, yeah. not Toy, so it looks different. But Yeah, so yeah, OVAs so are yeah, kind of just like a different world where it's just like I wish this could have been a fuller story. Story. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 a few OVAs out there that's like painful, like cuz they're so good. I yeah. Mean, it's painful every time I watch them because I'm like the potent like Battle Angel I have a video that I put out a couple months ago mm. that's like Battle Angel is like the epitome of like wasted opportunity. Oh yeah, I've I don't never know seen if you know it. Battle Angel. You've never seen the Battle Angel over here? You, I, I, I really am swimming in guilt because somebody a long time ago paid me because I used to do Patreon. This is one other thing that kind of ruined me. Somebody they used to donate money t- so that I would review certain things, and there were a few things I just never. Yeah, there's a few things I never got to, so I always feel bad about that. One of them was a Battle Angel Elite manga. 
I still think about that, but I'm thinking. Yeah. I want to watch the anime, but I don't want to spoil watch myself to it. Watch the OVA, man. It's, it's just good. an hour long. It's just an hour long. I love it so much. It's not complete, obviously, because you know it just it just adapted like the first like volume of the manga or something like that. But, yeah. So it leaves a lot of mystery, but it's just an hour long. Oh, oh it's the like first a, volume like a was amazing. Tra- yeah. Yeah, it's just a trailer of the manga is all it really is, right? Yeah. But well, every time I watch it, it's so painful because it's like I could see the 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 potential that it could have been like a full TV series with maybe a couple of seasons. There's the big, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's like this big world above them that they wanted to go to that could have, there's so much potential for what that world. And as far as I know, Gunnam is still going to this day. Gunnam is yeah. the battle uh, the, the battle angel, like the original manga name in Japan is called Gunmei, but it, well, I guess we'd call it Gun- Gunnam. Mm. It, to this day, there's still volumes that come out, and it's just like it's a wasted opportunity. Yeah, I wish you know, you know. I hate when things like that continue just forever because you need an yeah. ending at some point. But it's true. We're yeah, probably going to get a new anime to that at some point, and it's going to be CG. <laughs> that's it's, why, yeah, because because yeah. the movie came out. They did the movie. Yeah, uh, James Cameron. I think James Cameron was the one that that was behind the movie. Yeah, I never um, saw that either wasn't that great yeah you it's, either it's just like it's like you like either I, watch an anime and there's no end or you stay an anime fan long enough to see it destroyed with a destroyed. remake <laughs> like but yeah like ju- the the battle angel just imagine like if berserk did imagine the berserk tv series right yeah from 97 imagine that was just like a a one hour ova and then the <sighs> berserk manga was still going on to this day well, it's kind of like and, the three Berserk movies, but it's just mm. too much stuff crammed in. Yeah. But, and Berserk alone, that TV series alone still makes me feel like it was a wasted opportunity. So just imagine a one hour. Yeah, you know? it's got a good journey, but they really need to go somewhere with it. But they can't go somewhere with it as long as the manga just continues forever. So that's what I want to know. Sad- Why don't they just finish it? The sad thing is I don't really trust... I hate to say, but I don't really trust. And this is good. this is another episode that maybe we could discuss this on. But I don't yeah. really dis- I don't really trust modern anime with a lot of you know stuff that we would have wanted to see. Yeah, you gotta wait you like know. two, three years for another season or something. That and I just don't trust it to come out as good. To be quite honest, and yeah. Maybe if it was, maybe that's just the older the older anime fan in me talking, but. I think about it like this. How many Mm. One Piece fans or Attack on Titan fans were like, it's their reason for living, but they just Mm -hmm. died or something before they could finish it? It's like, how sad is that? Old anime is just like, hey, it's finished. All that's ever going to be here is right there. So like it or not, it's there. You can complete that. (laughs) It's true. True. Well, Bob, man. I, I got to get you back up here again. So yeah, I'm it's probably, been fun. We're, Thanks we're for probably the gonna talk. We're going to we'll probably talk after this because... Well, I got to go. I'm, my girlfriend's waiting on me. No, but no, no. I, I do. don't mean like right after. Oh, okay. I, don't mean right yeah. after. I just mean like following this call. Like yeah, yeah. Sounds good. I'll link you that site like, that I used to. Hopefully you can you can uh, make some use of that. Sounds good. And just let me know about, um, about the audio thing. Cause I'm going to watch yeah. your videos and let you know. Okay, cool. But um, listen, man, I appreciate you coming. Big fan. Um, and like I said at the beginning, everybody go check out his channel. His channel will be in the description. Go check out the channel. Watch every video. Watch <laughs> videos so you fall asleep. Wake up. Watch more videos. And, you know, great guy, great channel, man. Oh, well, thank um, you. Thanks for having me here. No problem, man. I am so tired. So I am going to sleep. Have fun with your girl. All right. Us, us.